Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome to episode seven of Animation Super Basics. Today, we're going to be talking about two different subjects. We're going to be talking about wind up and overshoot, and we're going to be talking about squash and stretch. Now, these are two animation, I guess, fundamentals and principles that are a staple in animation, and it's going to be a short and simple one, partly because uh, this topic pretty much is just that. Um, and also I had a thing yesterday and I drank too many, um, juice boxes and, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm struggling today. So, all right, let's get started. All right. So here we are in Adobe After Effects and look, it's our old friend, the dot that moves from left to right. And he is still moving from left to right. He's got little easy ease keyframes. So let's give our friend a friend. So we're gonna we're gonna duplicate uh, this shape layer, and we've done this before. You select position, bring that down. All right. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at here is wind up. All right. So if we go ahead, maybe like ten frames here we see its position is right here. So what we can do is click on it, hold shift, and we're gonna bring this, see, this is the original position. And we're gonna bring it over to here, all right? So wind up is getting ready for a movement. Before you make a movement, you wanna kind of build up to it to give it more impact. And that is what our wind up is doing. So if we play this back, you see it pops back and then pops forward. And of course we can play with these keyframes. All right, let's play this back. Cool. All right. So that is our first example. Yep, already. All right, so now let's duplicate our second shape layer here. Hit U, bring up the keyframes, click on the position, and let's bring this down like this, like so. And we're gonna delete the wind up keyframe that we created. All right, and now we're gonna go to 20 frames and we're gonna do the same concept except on the other side. So if we take it and drag it past this point, which is the original point, and bring it over to here. All right, so that's overshoot. And it's basically what it is. It's overshooting its final position. And of course, again, this is representing motion, power, speed, velocity, deceleration, all that stuff. So let's duplicate our layer one more time, and we're gonna talk about squash and stretch. So duplicate that, U, X, so position keyframes, move it down, bam. So let's go to 10 frames and let's move this backwards. Let's create another thing like that. In the middle of this move here, we want our, our ball to be stretched horizontally. And when it's at its points over here, where it's kind of squishing over into this corner before it shoots off on the other side, we want it to be stretched vertically. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit shift and S and that's going to bring up our scale and we're going to click on the stopwatch. All right. And we're also going to get rid of our link here. So we want to take this 100 and we want to make it maybe 120, just like that. But we, what we also want to do is lower this one by the same amount. So we raise this by 20. We want to subtract 20 from this. So 80. So what this is doing by doing it this way, you want to keep the same amount of volume. So the dot is the same size as these other dots. It's just proportionally stretched. 
And that's what we're going for in here. So actually right here, we want to set this back to 100 and 100. Same with the last keyframe, 100 and 100. All right, so when we go over to here, this is another, it's kind of like another part of wind up. We want to do the opposite. So we want to make this the smaller number. So let's do like 90 and 110. All right, and for this side, we're actually gonna make it a little more extreme. So we're gonna make this 70 and 130 because it's really squishing against that. And of course we want to easy ease our keyframes. And we can see what that's doing. It's kind of, it's starting off, you know, it's regular shape, it's getting distorted as it's pushing back this way. And then as it pushes forward, it stretches out and then squishes back up and pops back into place. All right, so let's select all our, our layers here. Hit U and select all the keyframes. And we're just gonna shorten this to about one second. So hit Alt or Option and drag this last keyframe to the one second mark. Now you can see if we just solo this one and this one, you can see how that changes the shape there. And it just adds so much more dynamic to your movement. All right, so let's do a little uh, quick composition here. Uh, 1920 by 1080, 30 frames. Uh, da, 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 that's fine. So now what we want to do is create a rectangle just like this. I'm making mine orange because that's the color it is right now. You can make yours whatever color you want. All right, now let's click off of here and go to our ellipse tool and double click on that. Change this to white or that color, whatever. All right, so let's uh, open up our contents. If you don't see it, you just twirl open your shape layer, contents, ellipse, ellipse path one, and we're gonna uncheck the constraint and we're gonna type in 1080 by 1080. Reconnect those and we're just gonna bring this down to size. Something like that. All right, let's move this up above here or just move that to right there. We're gonna have it pop up and then rest right there. Oh, no, not right. Yeah, well, you get the idea. All right, so let's press P and shift and S to bring up position and scale. We're just gonna create keyframe both of those and let's unlink our dimensions for our scale. And also let's right click on position and do separate dimensions and get rid of the X because we don't need it. Yeah. All right, so now we're just gonna hit U and what we're gonna do is actually move this layer below our rectangle. All right, so shape layer two or ball, how about that? Select our ball, shift, bring that down to about here. All right, so for our scale, we're gonna set the first number to 85 on the X and 115 on the Y and let's, Zoom in here. Maybe go to our one second mark, hit N to shorten the comp and go to composition, trim comp to work area. There we go. And let's go to about 20 frames here. Select our ball and just bring that up to, change this to 100, 100. Now we can go right there, plop that right there. Cool. Easy ease our keyframes. Let's go into our graph editor. 
Let's move around our points a little bit, give it a nice little uh, curve. There we go. So now we're going to come in maybe to about four, 14 frames here. And let's move up on the Y position for our overshoot. And then let's change our scale to be 120 and 80. And let's see how this looks. There we go. Let's select these guys and let's straighten this out. Maybe make this a little more of an extreme curve. There we go. Still missing something though. What is it missing? Maybe we can do this. And then like that. Maybe move this down there, this right there, and then connect that. I don't know, like something like that. I don't know. And then we can go into the ball and we can add like a merge paths maybe and just set this to exclude intersections. Oh, look, we got a smiley face. Oh, hi. All right. So this has been episode seven, a squash and stretch and overshoot and um, uh, wind up. It's pretty simple concepts, but they're actually really important for animations and stuff. They, as you can see, that just adds more dynamic. It adds more movement adds more velocity to your animations and ju they just look more organic and natural. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Why, hello there.